Wow, I see. I had no idea. Hi, Dr. Z. I said, hello, Dr. Z. Uh, hey, Roberta, sorry, I'm just trying to figure this out. This is incredible. Okay, well, you leave me no choice. Oh, I've always wanted to do this. Hello, kids, and welcome to today's show. I can't wait any longer to share all my stories and adventures with you. So, let's explore the animal world together. As always, buckle up, because we're about to bring the zoo to you. Roberta, why the long face? You nailed that introduction. <laughs> Do you expect anything less, Dr. Z? Maybe now that you've put your book down, you can let us all know what you are reading about. Well, Roberta, I am completely enthralled by this new book that I'm reading called Aquatic Playgrounds. It's all about the different aquatic habitats around the world. Everything from the wetlands to rivers to streams to the open ocean. I want to explore them all. I changed that, Roberta. I will explore them all. Well, considering 71% of the planet is covered in water, you may have a big task on your hands there, Dr. Z. But if I know you well enough, and I think I do, you'll no doubt have something up your sleeve to accomplish your journey. So let's hear it. I am going to build an aquatic locomotive, and I'm going to call it the Aquamobile! Ah, there it is! Another Dr. Z idea is born! And my Aquamobile, Roberta, is going to work in so many different habitats. It will be able to go from fresh water to seawater, from warm water to cold water. And Roberta, I know how we are going to build it. We are going to be inspired by the creatures that live in those habitats, the ones that live breathe and travel through all these different aquatic habitats. Oh, yes! I see where you're going with this. So we can learn how they move and how they breathe and how they survive and thrive underwater. Then we'll use those adaptations for your aquamobile. You're not just a pretty face, Dr. Z. Oh, well, thank you, Roberta, and you're a handsome zebra. But never mind that, Roberta. We're going to learn from the amphibians and the semi-aquatic animals, those that live on land and in the ocean as well. There's just so much to learn. You know, Roberta, that makes me wonder, what unique creature features allow animals to explore their aquatic habitats efficiently? OK. Dr. Z, let me help you out. You'll never believe this, but Olivia just finished that same book. She actually visited one of the amazing aquatic locations highlighted in Chapter 7, Crystal River, home of the manatees. Let's see what she discovered. I've heard of a place where magnificent marine giants swim freely in crystal clear water, a pristine ecosystem nicknamed an aquatic playground. And today, we're on a journey to find that place and get up close and personal with the majestic manatees that call Crystal River home. As we cruise through the river, my excitement builds. The environment that surrounds us truly lives up to its name, and it's not hard to see why the manatees chose the picturesque warm waters of Crystal River to escape the winter cold. The water in this area sits at a comfortable 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which I'm about to experience firsthand. The boat portion of our expedition has come to an end, and it's time for me to take our exploring to the next level and enter the home of these gorgeous creatures. It doesn't take long to find ourselves in the presence of these gentle giants. Their calm demeanor is infectious, and you can't help but feel relaxed as you swim alongside them. Each location we visit, we're greeted by new characters with their own unique personalities. In the Three Sister Springs, I was lucky enough to spend some time alongside this little manatee, as he attempted to satisfy an itch.
Swimming alongside these incredible marine mammals allows me to observe their movements and truly appreciate their unique body structure and adaptations. They are well designed for the aquatic lifestyle. Their huge paddle tail allows them to cruise through the water with effortless grace. And because manatees are mammals like you and I, they have to come up for breath every three to five minutes. They can actually open and close their nostrils to allow the oxygen in and keep the water out. So they only have to lift their heads up just enough to open their nostrils on the surface of the water. And their upper lip is prehensile, meaning that it's capable of grasping, which allows the manatees to easily mow through vegetation on the river floor. While some of these gentle aquatic mammals are quite friendly, curious and playful, it's important to remember that we are a guest in their home and must treat the manatees and their environment with the utmost respect. I think it's safe to say that our expedition to this aquatic playground was a success and it was truly an honour to swim alongside such a beautiful, majestic creature. Whoa, Roberta, that video was incredible. There's so much to learn. It's got a paddle-like tail that helps it move smoothly through the water. And then it's got those nostrils that open and close to get air. I can open my nostrils, but I can't shut them close tight. Kids, can you do that? Open your nostrils, can you shut them tight? No, I'm gonna have to use that, so the nostrils. And then we've got that lip, that lip that grabs things. I want to go back and watch that part in the video again. Can we do that? Let's watch for a moment how the manatee lip moves. It's prehensile. Prehensile means it can grasp and hold onto things. Look at how the manatee is eating the grass. I must have prehensile abilities on my aquamobile. We never know when we might need to grab something. So, the manatees have given you quite a bit of inspiration for your design so far, Dr. Z. But how will you power your aquamobile? Hmm, that's a good question, Roberta. I'm not quite sure. Thank you for asking. I'll get back to you later. Well, I've got some more aquatic animal inspiration for you. Let's check in with Billy from Hartley's Crocodile Adventures in Cairns, Australia to meet some Merton's Water Monitors. Today we're going to be looking at Merton's water monitors. They're found right across the top end of Australia. And here at Hartley's Crocodile Adventures, we've got a beautiful exhibit with 11 awesome adults that call it home. They can be over three and a half kilo. That's the size of a medium sized pumpkin and over 1.2 meters in length. You may notice they've got a long compressed tail which helps them move really fast through the water, like a croc's tail. Their nostrils raise on top of the nose so they can quickly pop up, take a breath, back under, and then that big, long, fleshy forked tongue, they use that to locate their prey underwater. Although they spend a lot of time in the water, they still need to sit up and bask in the sun. Being ectothermic, they rely on an external heat source to power their body. And one of their self-defense methods is that big, long tail. They use it like a stock whip. You get too close and whack. Next time you're in Northern Australia, keep an eye out for the Mertens water monitor. You will not be disappointed. Roberta, you are a genius. That's exactly what we needed. The Mertens water monitor are ectothermic. That means they get their heat from an external source and they get a charge too. So our aquamobile will be solar powered and that will keep us moving. Oh, that's a great idea, Dr. Z. I also like the way the water monitors use their tongues to locate prey. Maybe you should add a sensory system around the exterior as well, so we can pick up any vibrations in the water. Good job, Roberta. Now go slow, because I'm taking this all down. Just think of all the amazing creatures we're going to be able to explore. <laughs> well, now that you mention amazing creatures, Dr. Z, maybe we should all brush up on our aquatic animal knowledge with some trivia, so we can have a better understanding of which animals you might encounter on your journey. You are quite right, Roberta. I love the trivia. Well, hello, friends, and welcome to this week's 
Sports Trivia at KZOO Sports Radio. I am your host, Dr. Howard Zulittle, and this week we are looking at the international championships with animals. Our first competitors are in the heavyweight section. We're looking for the largest creature in the world, and we've got three choices for you. Do you think it is the blue whale, the great white shark, or is it the sperm whale? The answer is the blue whale. Blue whales are the largest animals on Earth by a long shot. They can weigh in at over 300,000 pounds. Put it this way, Dr. Z and his aquamobile would be about the size of his pectoral fin. Thank you again and welcome back to KZOO. Are you ready for our next competition? This is for the world's deepest diver. Do you think it is the Cuvier beaked whale or the emperor penguin? Or perhaps you think it is the elephant seal? The answer is the Cuvier beaked whale. They can dive as deep as 9,816 feet. These whales are able to lower their heart rate and have rib cages that can fold down to help them withstand the extreme pressure of their deep dives. Our next competitor is the ocean speediest swimmer. Do you think it is the mako shark or the black marlin? or perhaps the bluefin tuna. The answer is the black marlin. This fish is built for speed with an aerodynamic bill in the front and a large crescent-shaped tail for power. Wow, Dr. Zoolittle, I wonder if your aquamobile is going to be able to travel that fast. <laughs> Dr. Z, there is one special ingredient that most fish use to help them move through the water quickly and efficiently. It's something I know you happen to be an expert on. Slime! Slime is one of my research specialties. It's all about and I am about to make the perfect slime. I have got some white glue. You can use colored glue, you can use glitter glue, you can use color changing glue, and I have a starch as well. You can use liquid starch, contact lens solution. What happens when I mix my white glue and my starch? What is your hypothesis? What is your educated guess? My hypothesis is I'm about to make some slime. So. I am going to take my white glue and add just a bit of water. I'm not going to give you any measurements because that's the fun part about making slime is you get to experiment, you get to try. I'm going to stir that up with my craft stick over there and then I'm going to add my liquid starch. Stir that around and I'm going to pour out the excess liquid starch over there and guess what I have? The perfect slime. Look how gooey that is. We have got the perfect slime. If you add some more starch, it's going to get thicker. Less starch is going to be much more runny. And what I always like to do is I like to take some green food coloring. Let's put some green food coloring there. Stir it around. And now I have some booger slime over there. Look how great that is. Booger slime. You don't have to have booger slime. You could make some glitter slime. You can stick some iron filings in there and make some magnetic slime over there. Stick some perfume in there and you can make some fragrant slime. You can stick some foam balls in there and make some foam slime. You can experiment with everything. So my hypothesis was correct. Some glue and some liquid starch and I made the perfect slime. Ooh! My second all about ooh is slime as well. And I want to know what happens when a baby pees in a diaper. How do they stay nice and dry? What you're going to need is an adult, a diaper, and a pair of scissors. I am going to cut open the diaper, and inside my diaper is some white powder. So let me collect my white powder. 
inside the diaper. I'm gonna add some water. This is the baby's pee. Ew. The diaper powder and the baby pee creates a slime. And that is a definite Ew. Now that I think about it, maybe this could come in handy in the aquamobile to help make any little leaks disappear. Or maybe absorb any water if you want to take the aquamobile on land, just like a semi-aquatic animal. I think I'm onto something here. Let's see if we can get a little bit more inspiration for the final touches to the aquamobile. Hi, I'm Josh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about a platypus. There is the most evolutionary distinct mammal on the planet. Um, obviously the most identifying feature is this beautiful bill here, which is actually nothing like a duck bill at all. It's, it's, it's quite soft and pliable. It has that amazing ability to detect its prey underwater using electroreception. And then sitting behind the bill you have the eye and ear which sit in a little groove and when they dive a muscle actually closes the whole system so they don't actually use their eyes underwater at all. They're quite unusual in that they swim with their front feet whereas most aquatic animals will swim with their hind feet. So very extensively webbed front feet. So very strong swimmers. They can then sort of pull that in for the return stroke to reduce drag and make their swimming more efficient. And then of course because they live on, you know, they can travel on land as well, the whole, all the webbing actually folds underneath and their claws get exposed so they can dig their burrow. So it's a really neat little system that they've got. Whereas their back feet aren't involved in swimming at all, so very little webbing. Um, they tend to just sit by the, the side of the body and use a little bit for, um, for steering, that's about it. Um, I've got a very dense waterproof fur, traps a layer of air next to the body when they dive which insulates the body and maintains their body temperature and they can store up to a third of their body fat in their tail. So obviously when conditions are good they build up condition and store all that fat so they can then draw on it when, uh, when there's not so much food around. And that gives me an idea of the condition of the animal by the size and shape of its, of its tail. Yeah, so our most distant mammalian relative and possibly the most unusual creature on the planet. Wow, Roberta, that was incredible. I love those web feet and how they folded back and claws appeared when they went on land. I have to have that in my aquamobile. These appearing claws. Okay, Roberta, Roberta. Roberta! I'm right here, Dr. Z. What is it? Roberta, I am ready to unveil my creation. Well, you'll have to pump the brakes because there's one more surprise for you and our guests. You know how you were so inspired by the platypus? Well, Olivia was too. Today, we're going to make a platypus bookmark. You're gonna need two different colored cardboards. Now I've chosen orange and red, but you can use whatever colors you like. You can even use a patent cardboard as well. Be as creative as you wanna be. The first step is to create our platypus bookmark body. Now basically the shape is just a big rectangle with a head and a tail. And with your pen, create the body. Now that you've drawn that, next step is to cut it out. Perfect, now the next step is to cut out our features, which will be the platypus bill and four feet. So same as before, just draw them up and then cut them out. All right, now we've finished our feet and our bill. The next step is to apply them to the body. Now, I always like to make sure that everything lines up first before I commit to the glue. So these feet will go just at the top here and these feet will go just at the bottom and the bill on the face. That looks pretty good to me. Now it's time to glue. All right, that is our feet. Now the next step is to do the platypus bill. But here's a little tip. Don't glue the entire bill down, just glue the top of it so that when you use it in your book, the platypus bill sticks out to mark your page. Now press that down until it dries. 
time to add our eyes. Now I have a pair of little googly eyes here, but like I said before, you can always draw them on if you don't have any. All right, now our next step is to use a paint pen or any kind of felt pen that you have at home to mark out some details. So we'll do the nostrils and we'll add some lines for the hands and feet. And there we have it, our platypus bookmark. Perfect. All right, Roberta, I am ready to reveal my invention. I have incorporated everything we learned from our aquatic friends. A paddle-shaped tail for smooth movement. Two nostrils that open as they come up for air. An upper lip that is prehensile, suitable for grabbing. We have solar panels for ectothermic power. A sensory system to detect vibrations underwater. And web feet equipped with foldable claws to work both on land and in water. Isn't it perfect? You know, kids, I believe some of you have created your own inventions. Why didn't you send them to me so I can check them out? You can send them to Zmail, Z stands for Zebra and Zoolittle, mail at sandiegozoo.org. Get a grown up to help you, and if we use your invention on the air, we'll mention your name. Dr. Z, you have truly created something special there. Do you think it'll work? When does construction start? It will be ready in no time. <laughs> Sounds good, Dr. Z. Well, while you've been busy creating things with inspiration from nature and animals, many of our viewers have too. That's right, Roberta. I forgot all about Z-mail. Our first email comes all the way from Peyton in England. That is so far away, Peyton. And Peyton sent us this picture of her favorite animal, the giraffe. Look how she made that out of the insides of a toilet paper and some craft paper, and I see some pipe cleaners in there. Peyton, that is amazing. And you also drew a picture of another one of your favorite animals, the orangutan. Wow, she's done an amazing job. We've got some great Z-mail from brothers Kevin and Derek, who live here in California. Kevin is loving the Kids' Corner Show and drew us a picture. Wonderful. And Derek, inspired by Dr. Z's cockroach poem, wrote a poem about reptiles. Snakes are really cute. If you harm them, then you are a brute. If you kill snakes, you are rude. You must give up all your food. They are reptiles without legs. They like to eat animal eggs. They have lived with dinosaurs. They are also carnivores. Oh, fantastic, Derek. Well, we've really been spoiled with Z-mail this week and we're almost out of time and I am excited to let you know that we don't have time for Roberta's joke segment this week. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. My joke segment? Don't be silly. There's always time for that, Dr. Z. <laughs> There are two reasons why you should never drink toilet water. Number one and number two. What did the glass of water ask the other glass of water? Water, you doing today? Oh, Dr. Z, I really love water. It floats my boat. Okay, Roberta, those jokes were good, but I've got some brilliant jokes from our Z-mail account. The first one comes from Sadie from North Carolina. Sadie says, what do you call a flying skunk? A smelly copter. <laughs> Sadie, that was perfect. I think I'm going to build a smelly copter next. First the aquamobile, then the smelly copter. Brilliant. Will in Vermont writes, what did the ocean say to the seal? Hmm. Nothing. He just waved! Oh, well, that is brilliant! These jokes are far better than any of Roberta's jokes. Keep them coming. You need to send them to us to Z, which stands for zebra. Mail at sandiegozoo.org. They're going to go directly to Roberta. Get an adult to help you. And if we use your joke on the air, we'll mention your name. Well, we've come to the end of our time together. And I loved how we used the inspiration from the animals to build our aquamobile. 
Me too, Dr. Z. From tail designs, to sensory systems, to multi-purpose feet. We learn that when it comes to moving through water, nature never disappoints in clever designs. Where in nature do you look for inspiration? Oh, yes, maybe colorful plants inspire your artwork, or maybe a bird inspires poetry. And we can't forget the humble worm for dance move inspiration. Well, I hope you had fun this week, and I hope you'll join me for another episode of San Diego Zoo Kids Corner. And remember to keep sending in your jokes, your stories, your poems, your questions, and even your inventions. You can email them to us at zmail, Z stands for zebra and zoo little, mail at sandiegozoo.org. And if we use your joke, your story, your poem, your question, and your invention, we'll mention your name on the air. Till then, see you soon. Stay curious, my friends.